Hey, so today, guys, um, Jesus has kind of laid on my heart to discuss a little bit about um, kind of just understanding um, the power that we're given as God's people. That's so what I'm going to do first, guys, is I'm going to take a second and I'm going to pray and just ask Jesus to kind of help me be able to say what needs to be said in a way that that's going to be understood. <laughs> so, Jesus, I just come to you, Father. And, and Yahweh, I thank you so much for today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, touch the lives of others, whether it be through prayer or teaching or, or simply just an act of love, an act of kindness. Jesus, just continue to guide and direct our steps. And Yahweh, may, may the words that I speak, may the, may the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable to you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. So something I've, I've seen a lot in the church today is, is kind of uh, two polars. Um, we have one side that says that, um, well, I have the power. Like, I have the power. Um, you know, you need, to, you need to listen to what I say, you need to do this, you need to do that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's a lot of pride that at times comes with being anointed. Um, and we see lessons all throughout, um, I believe, the Old Testament that really shows how this uh, this can go horribly wrong really, really fast. I think a perfect example is Saul, um, a man anointed by God, the first king of Israel, and uh, like he fell and he fell hard, um, ended up going against God, you know, losing the anointing um, and committing suicide by falling on his own sword. Mind you, I'm not saying that because you have chosen pride that God is going to completely turn his face from you. That, that's not what I mean here. But there is something that I do want us to really understand. So before that, I want to look at the, the other side. And this is the side that says that it's not me. It's, it's, only, it's only God working through me. And guys, I'm going to tell you this. Both sides are um, living in a fallacy. Because the whole point of being able to walk with Christ is that it's an act of will. We have a choice. Yes, God gives us power. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us gifts. Every single one of us has a gift. Whether it's a gift of speaking or a gift of tongues or a gift of teaching. You know, God gives us each many, many, many different gifts. And there's, you know, there's a choice in all of that and how we use it. I've seen individuals who are given a gift of faith or a gift of miracles and they use it for selfish gain and they end up losing it. And the thing is, Jesus warns us about that in the scriptures. Matthew 25, um, verse 29, you know, when we're talking of the parable of the talents, you know, the, Jesus says right then and there that when you're faithful with a little, you will be faithful in much and more will be added to you. And you'll have an abundance. But if you're not faithful with what little you have, even that will be taken from you. So guys, I, I want you to kind of understand what a relationship with our Heavenly Father like looks like. And I know not everybody has kids, but most people have parents, or at least a, a parental figure in their life, or have had a relationship with a, a brother or a sister or, or a loved one. And I think something that is common amongst all of those relationships, whether they were positive or, or negative influences on your life, is that you had to spend time together, okay? You had to get to know the person. Now, okay, why does this matter when I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the giftings of the Holy Spirit? It's because you can't expect to be able to walk in, in power and in authority in the glory of God without first having a relationship and understanding his heart. You know, if, if you are going to, if, if he gives you a gift, say, of, of uh, a gift of tongues, okay, we'll, we'll start with that. And you start exalting yourself above others, those individuals who don't have a gift of tongues, and say that you're better than them. Well, I'll be honest with you, you miss the point. The point is to use what God has given you in love. And saying that you're better than somebody else because of a gift that you have is inherently sinful. That's, that's pride. That's comparison. So, 
An example that I, I give some of my students is, uh, is a hammer any better than a screwdriver in, in a toolbox? And, and the answer that I got, which I thought was awesome, is, well, one's not better than the other. They're just, they're used differently. And that is the correct answer. Um, you can't compare yourself to another person. Even though you may have similar gifts, you've not lived that person's life. You don't know what that individual has gone through to get to the point that they are at. And the best response in those situations, because we're all going to be tempted, is to be grateful for that person. Grateful for the gifts that they have. Grateful that you have an opportunity to learn from them. Now going back to understanding that the two kind of polars and, and where I believe God meets us, and that's found in John 15. We abide in him. He abides in us. And together, together we bear much fruit. For on our, no, on our, on our own, we can do nothing of value. So, guys, the, the way to really destroy this, this concept of it's only God, or it's 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 all me, or or whatever whatever side you may find yourself on is to realize that everything is a gift from God, but we have a choice in how we use it. We are able to steward these gifts, and if we steward it well, whether it, whether it be our finances, whether it be our our physical health, or or the food in a refrigerator, or how often you eat out, or how much takeout you get. Um, all of these things are resources that God gives us. Even, even a gift of, of miracles is a resource that God has, has given us as the church to expand the kingdom of light and destroy the kingdom of darkness. So the perspective I would love to see more of, of God's children adopt is an attitude of gratitude and perceiving the reality of things as we are stewards here on the earth. That's our original purpose. When, when we see in Ephesians 2 that we are reborn, recreated, we are God's masterpiece, that we are recreated to do the good things that he originally had for us. Guys, that was our original purpose, was to steward creation. And now as, as we are walking in the light, as he is in the light, as we have fellowship one with another, we are able, we are able to help each other heal through the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us. Because guys, it's, it's not just one or the other, it is both. It is us coming together in unity, in unity. And as we do that, we get to experience the fullness of God within us. That's the point, guys is to love the way Jesus loves. So guys, I, I hope this brings some clarity to you guys. I hope this helps you kind of understand that you know what, it's not just you. It's, it's not just God, it's us coming together. And that the way that works is through relationship. It's through getting to know our creator and, and just to be honest with who we are and where we're at. So guys, I, I thank you for listening. I thank you for taking the time. Love you guys. Shalom.